Let's go to the basics. Right? There's a country with citizens who are entirely dependent, almost entirely dependent, on one sector. Right? Firstly, right, that's, that's just bad country management. Right? Okay. And I won't, I'm not blaming this administration because we've had four administrations prior to this. Right? Since 1999. Okay? Right. So everyone knew since 1999, right? Okay. That the economy is purely dependent on oil. Right? And that's risk. There are always at any point in time 36 governors. Right? For the 36 states. Below them, Right, or as an adjunct, right, are uh, 36 houses of assembly. Yeah? Then, at the federal level, there's always a precedent for the time being, and a national legislature. Surely, the entire political system right, must be aware, right, that the whole country that they have been voted into power in the last 20 years to manage. Right, is leaning on just one product, a mono product. And that's risk. All it takes is political will. That's where I'm going. For all these people who have been elected to represent the people in the last 20 years, right, to just understand a very simple issue, right, that you must prepare for the rainy day and therefore craft the essential legislation required they all just need to just wake up sit down agree right in the interest of the people that they claim to represent and that legislation why is it so difficult i remember some almost uh i don't want to use the i don't want to use extreme words here but i was shocked when a governor years ago said that, as far as it's concerned, the rainy day has come, he wants his own share exactly. of the excess crude oil account. He wants it now, now, now. And he motivated all the other governors. They collected money. There's nothing left in the, in the basket. Then the price of oil crashed. In 2014, the price of oil crashed. So we all knew there's a problem. How come since 2014 and now they still haven't wrapped their minds around the issue to lock money away for times like this? So let's understand what we're dealing with here. It's just the absence of political responsibility by those elected to lead the people at all levels. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to ascribe level to just uh, you know one, one person. No, that, that's wrong. The entire political system that should take the blame for this problem. That's what nations do. Resource only nations must know that they must put money away for the rainy day. Otherwise, what you should also do, you should broaden the economy. And we can't just keep putting lip service right to the broadening. Right? You, we have industrial minerals in abundance in this country. We have crude oil, we have natural gas. These are the bedrock, bedrock of any economy that could be supremely industrial. Again, we go back to the political system. The reason why we get up to vote people into power, which we've done successfully since 1999, right, right is a hope that they will put us in the industrial age, given the resources that God has given us. There's no country on the continent that has the breadth of resources Nigeria has. And I can tell that because this is where I practice. I top that with the human capital Nigeria has in, in, in abundance. There's no reason we should be in this problem or in an economic, uh, economic mess. It is just poor planning over the last 20 years. 
and I have to I have to keep emphasizing this. This is not a problem that you can say was the fault of this present regime. Uh, they have their own issues, but every regime to date right, has failed to do what it should do. So collectively, they must all collectively take the blame for not responding to the aspirations of the people. So that's the issue.